Hey guys, it's Sarah here from Edgecombe Art. Look, just a really quick video today, um, a, a talking video. Anyway, I just thought I would bust the myth today that uh, acrylic paints are not toxic because that is not the case. Um, I switched over from oils and yes, one of the reasons I switched over from oils was because uh, oil paints are that little bit um, you know, more toxic because of all the thinners and things that you might have to use and they're, um, you know, from a ventilation point of view can be a little bit more uh, nasty than, um, than acrylics. But the fact that acrylic paints are non-toxic is not the case. Um, you think that because kids poster paints, which normally are non-toxic, um, and they are, you know, non-toxic, people think that all acrylic paints aren't and obviously that's not the case. So that's what we're going to be discussing today about art paints and pigments. Hey guys, alrighty, so acrylic paints, not toxic. <laughs> no, that's not the case. Um, kids paints, poster paints, are uh, normally marked non-toxic on the bottle. And you're probably right there, they probably are non-toxic. Um, and most people therefore assume that all acrylic paints are non-toxic. It's not the case. Um, particularly as you get up into, uh, you know, artist grade paints, you're going to start seeing some toxic elements coming into your paints. And a lot of people don't necessarily remember that acrylic paints can be toxic. So anything with uh, the words cadmium, chromium, lead and cobalt um, can have some issues. Uh, they're the main ones that I um, know about. So they're the heavy, heavy metal, heavy metal colors that can cause toxicity. And they are the sorts of things that build up in your system over time. Uh, and can some have cancer causing properties and some can cause reproductive issues um, a bit like um, you know mercury and fish and things and people uh, who have eaten a lot of really big big fish you know consistently um, in the lead up to trying to get pregnant and thing might have some you know mercury issues or anything like that which might be cause problems um, it's the same with the these um, same with these paints so as a general rule they are not toxic if you are painting with them on the end of a brush. Um, I switched over from oils over to uh, the acrylics because you know, all the fumes and things that go with the cleanup of oils and all the thinners and things like that were, you know, are, you know, are toxic and are not good as well as the paint colors. Um, but as I said, they're not toxic when they're painting on the edge of the brush. But if you're touching them, getting them, you know, like into your skin, using your hands to paint. If you, you know, wiping paint consistently off your canvas, as you sometimes do, or smudgy bit, you know, give it a little bit of a little bit of a rub. Um, and then you're scratching your face, putting your hands in your eyes. I always do that. I'm like terrible at putting my hands in my eyes. Um, you know, you go and get a cookie without washing your hands properly, or, you know, your kid picks up a paintbrush and starts painting your face with it, or your cat walks over the, um, you know, some tissues on the floor that you were wiping off your, you know, your brushes on or, you know, paint splatter, the water splatter, the water jar, those sorts of things. They are, you know, they are potential, um, potential problems with those. And the big ones, before I get any further on, is if you are airbrushing or if you then sand it. So if you're painting, you know, a big abstract piece and you then, you know, sand off the back, uh, where you've got lots of, you know, cad yellow or, or cobalt or whatever it is, and there's dust everywhere, that dust gets in, um, that's not good. Now, once or twice, you know, occasionally these sorts of things aren't considered a huge problem, but a build up over time, if you're working with paints for, you know, say 50 years or something like that, then obviously that um, that is a problem. Anyway, so how do you know? <laughs> okay, most paints, obviously you'd say, oh, it's just with the, just with the label. What's the, the title of the um, title of the paint? Or you think, oh, they're going to have a nice big fancy warning label on them. No, they don't. Um, so some paints are not considered not considered toxic. Um, so things like you know ultramarines and some of your earth colors, um, you know like blacks and whites and uh, not lead white, but uh, normal white, um, you know considered not toxic. But some obviously you have to pay that little bit more attention to. So cobalt blue, um, cad yellow. That's cad yellow light. Um, 
Oh, no, that's the the blood. And I have the cad yellow deeps and some of the reds and things floating around um, as well. You need to be careful with them. I don't have any of the chromium and I actually don't have any lead either. Uh, lead white, so beautiful to paint with oil paints though. Anyway, skin tones and stuff, so pretty. Alrighty, so how do you know what's actually in your paints? Um, something that I've always been really interested in is the actual pigment that's used in the paints. And it's the reason why, uh, particularly with blends, blends across brands can be quite different because they use different um, different paints in them. So, for example, um, I've just got two different colours here. They're from different different makers. Um, the Italia uh, Sap Green and a Joe Sonia's uh, Sap Green. This one has uh, two pigments in it. And it says on the back of the label, and I know my camera is not going to pick this up very well, PG7 and uh, P... Uh, y139 and this one here I uh, don't know why the camera doesn't like to pick up my um, the sides of these these tubes here no we're not going to get you can see pigment sort of in there and it's PY74 and PB15.3 which is a, um, a phthalo so they're made with completely different completely different colors which is really helpful if you're then trying to um, mix up another color, you know, a darker color or something to go with it. Not that I often use, um, uh, you know, pre-mixed greens, but some of them are pretty. Um, it's just, it, you know, it's just that little bit helpful if you then know that, oh, that's a phthalo based, you know, green. So I can, you know, darken it or resaturate it with, with that one. Or, you know, what yellow can I blend with this? It's kind of kind of match it a bit better. Oh, that's made with such and such. So that's really, really helpful to know. Um, and ones that you're looking out for um, from a pigment perspective, you can look these up online, which is why I'm telling you where they all are. Pigments. So this is PY37, and um, that's cadmium. That's the cadmium one. And cad yellow deep because it's a different pigment. Because cad light is not cad deep with white mixed in it. And a lot of people think that you can't mix cad yellow light by adding white paint to the um, cad yellow deep. You need their different colors. So this is a, a lighter, cooler yellow, and Cad Deep is more like the um, more like that kind of a color. Um, so that's one thing. One thing I will mention though, with your cadmium paints, you can now get. See, this is Cad Yellow Light. You can get them with the Liquitex anyway. The um, Sans Cadmium. So these ones are they cat the same color, but they don't have the toxic. Um, component of it so that's a really good thing to know so if you see ones that are cadmium free cadmium yellow <laughs> then that means that they've been uh, that the nasty bits have been taken out of them I don't know I've not really used a lot of them very often I don't often use my cadmium paints as a rule now anyway because the cleanup and stuff like that I'm just like to be a bit more careful you know I have got a small small baby at home and if she's home I just need to be really careful you know I mean occasional things but Wherever you can avoid, you know, touching your face or hands or inhaling or doing whatever it is, probably a good thing. Got my cobalt blue. Oh, I love cobalt. It's really pretty. Anyway, so I'm just going to switch over to um, the web for a second and show you a really great website. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over to the web for a second and show you a really good, um, a really good website that I found. So here we have. Oh, it's cobalt there straight away. So this is the um, Color of Art Pigment Database. So you can actually go and look up the, uh, the pigments on the side of your tube so you know exactly what is in them, which is really interesting. Uh, most websites will also, um, you know, like, so this is the Italia um, color chart, and it says what pigments are in each of the paints. So there you go, Cad Yellow Medium is, oh, it's medium, that's 3.7. Um, and then, but, you know, like, PY73 is transparent yellow, and you can see here how Indian yellow is a blend um, and uses the different colors uh, through. So it's really good to it's really good to know that information. Anyway, so the color of our pigment database here. Uh, where was I? I was in blue. Oh, hang on, blue. I'll just go to PB. And if we go down to twenty eight, which is cobalt. Oh, that's the daily light. Da 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 da. <clears throat> Prussian blue. There we go. 28, cobalt, there you go. So it's not necessarily soluble water, but 
doesn't pose a hazard in normal artistic use, but avoid the dust and avoid the spray. Do not point a point, do not put a point on your brush with your mouth. Don't lick the paint off your fingers. And you'd be surprised at how often, <laughs> you know, you might actually do this sort of thing and make sure you wash your hands. Um, you are danger to the environment is minuscule, but try to get all the paint on the painting <laughs> and not on your clothes or your pet. Great advice as always. Um, and then if we go over, so like black, PBK, so if you have a look on here, uh, black paint is PBK, white, titanium white here is PW, white 6, um, and orange you got PO, o, yellow, um, here we go. So let's go and have a look at yellow. <coughs> And we want also oh, Hansy yellows, cadmium yellows. There you go. Um, soluble cadmium compounds can be toxic if ingested or the dust is inhaled. They are a known reproductive and developmental toxicant. So there you go. Just you know, so you can have a little bit of a look at where all your um, all your pigments are from. And I guess that's just the point of today's little wee video, that just to be a little bit careful that uh, acrylic paints can uh, be toxic. A lot of people might think that acrylic paints are not toxic because of kids' poster paints, or they've started off using acrylic paint that is non-toxic. And as they've got that little bit more, um, you know, interested in the paint, they've started buying new paint colours from, you know, artist-grade artist, artist brands. And... Um, they didn't realize that as they switched over to those colors that there was going to be a problem. Anyway, um, obviously everything I have said is not, you know, like medical advice and you need to go and have a check it out yourself. Anyone can have an allergy, you know, to anything, contact allergies. Um, and some of those, I know, I know a few people that do get, you know, contact, um, you know, like contact dermatitis and things from uh, a variety of those things. So it's just, I guess, a little reminder to be cautious um, and that paint tubes do not necessarily carry a warning on them that says this is toxic. So um, it's always a good idea to, um, to check it out and also to figure out if um, the method that you are using to use that is going to be a problem. And again, it's not normally a problem, you know, like if it's an occasional thing or, you know, um, you know, just once or twice, that sort of thing. It's a build up that causes, um, that causes the problem. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Any questions, let me know and uh, happy painting. See you later.